the canoe, I, th I think, is actually probably the most enduring symbol that we have for uh, navigation in the northern part of, uh, of the New World, anyway, uh, and specifically the birch bark canoe. There's no question that, uh, that the birch bark canoe was used at the time when the first explorers came into this area. They wouldn't have been able to get here without the bark canoe. Uh, they traveled in the bark canoes, they, they turned them over, slept under them. I mean, they did everything. Champlain, of course, talks uh, quite a bit about both birch bark and the Iroquois um, elm bark canoes. So this was a wonderful chance for me as a scholar and Aaron as a canoe builder to work together to figure out well, what was canoe, you know, 400 years ago, what did it look like? So this build is more representative of the canoe that was built as a workhorse on the land, and it's kind of the predecessor of those more refined canoes, but the people didn't have as much time to focus on the art, so they were focusing more just on the function. So this was kind of the turning point when iron tools first came in to get the refinement for the, uh, the form. And then later on, people became very competitive, and within a community you have a number of families all building these canoes, and there was a lot of pride. And that's where we started seeing, you know, the really pushing the envelope as far as art and tweaking little things here and there. This is spruce root. And this is what we're going to use to lash the, uh, the sides and all the whole, basically all the sewing that needs to be done on it to keep it together. <laughs> then, uh, pull out the core, basically, so just make a little cut. Kind of got a feel for it because it wants to split one way or the other. Look at you go. Alright, now. Lay this one flat. Basically, start this one. Like we're going the same hole. The stem is the internal structure that goes into the ends. It, it gives the, the canoe or the boat, and any boat, its, uh, its end rigidity. You know, if you, when you land the canoe in particular, and you come up against the shore, uh, it is what keeps the end rigid. But what I'm using for the first time on this, hopefully it works, um, is uh, uh, brown ash splint instead of root. This is something I found on old Penobscot canoes and some old Abenaki canoes. It's from the pounding, pounded ash log. The ash, I, you collect yourself, it, it just comes out as the log, right out of the woods. And it, um, in order to get the splint that I'm working with, you pound the log with a hammer or back of an axe. What that does is it releases the growth rings. And brown ash is the one that's used for that. So it's the same material that's used for making baskets. So like in basket making communities, it's very common to see ash used also in the canoes because it it's stronger than root is. What I'm doing is I'm cutting a bevel. I'm cutting the edge of this bark so it comes in so that I can squish this in, hold onto the stem like that. And that makes a finer line, so that it's easier to get the pitch onto there. The pitch is the sealer? Yep. Yeah, that's what's the only thing that's going to keep this canoe dry is the pitch. Most of my canoes now are this forward raked design. The design itself, it's, it's uh, what are more or less known as the Passamaquoddy or the Penobscot design of canoe. But that's the, the Penobscot are our first cousins as far as the Abenaki goes. Our, our languages are the same. It's just a different community. Um, as far as the characteristics these canoes have, it's the ones with the tumble home sides, the bulge sides, that are really hard and pushed out, and they have the edge-to-edge -edge planking on the insides. And uh, those canoes are really refined as far as what they do and how they perform. Yeah, these are the uh, 
planks that are going to go on the inside. And you put the ribs in, and that's basically what gives it its shape and all that. softening the rib tips with hot water so that uh, they don't split when they go up into the rib temper. So it looks like you're softening up the sides? Yeah, we're heating up the sides and that softens the bar so it'll take this tumble home shape. And then it'll just tumble on home. So I'm doing a little shim right now, and sometimes you don't get the fit you want on a rib because the guy you're working with is overtired, so you have to make these shims to... Ah. Ready? 